All right, hard at work here on problem 12-77 from the end of chapter questions. This one deals with um, freezing and boiling points of solutions vis-a-vis uh, -vis these colligative properties. The problem reads, a solution is made from glucose, formula C6H1206, sugar. That solution contains 55.8 grams of the glucose dissolved in 455 grams of water. Determine the freezing point and the boiling point of the resulting solution. So, of course, one of the major things we learned about when we talked about these colligative properties is that if we make a solution, we take a solvent and dissolve a solute, the presence of the solute will change the boiling point and the freezing point of the solvent. The freezing point will be depressed, it will go down, it will freeze at a lower temperature, the boiling point is going to be raised. We call that freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. Of course, the next thing that we learned about when we were speaking of these things is some equations which govern this behavior. These equations are important to remember for your examination that will be coming up very soon. The equations look very similar to one another. The form is delta triangle TF, that's the change in the freezing point, is equal to the molality of the solute times the freezing point depression constant times I, where I is the Van Hoff factor. M is the molality, this is what the L, moles per kilogram solvent. This is going to be our freezing point depression constant. It's a property of the solvent itself. Water's got its own value, benzene's got its own value, acetone's got its own value. Every solvent has its own KF value. And I is our Van Hoff factor. The Van Hoff factor, remember that theoretical value, describes how many particles you get per one formula unit when our given molecule or solute dissolves. Okay? In this particular case, we've got glucose, which is our sugar. It's a molecular compound. It's, it's not an ionic solid. So its Van Hoff factor is just going to be equal to 1. So we're going to reflect that in our equation ultimately, okay? Because one molecule dissolves, or one mole of particles result when, when um, one mole of glucose, glucose dissolves in the solution. All right, now let's look at the boiling point business. Well, boiling point's going to go up for our solvent. We can figure out how much the boiling point will go up. Delta TB is my change in boiling point, and that's equal to the molality times Kb, the boiling point elevation constant, times I, where I is again that Van Hoff factor. Again, for glucose, that's just equal to 1 because it's our molecular compound. But if I was dealing with an ionic solute, an ionic compound, chances are that I would not equal 1. It might be 2 or 3, depending on how many particles or how many ions are produced when a mole of the compound, um, or how many moles of ions are produced when a mole of the compound uh, dissolves. Okay, so that's the business with I. Here it's just one, so um, not too, too terribly difficult to deal with. It just kind of goes away when we multiply by one. Now, how are we going to approach this problem? Okay, well, we need to figure out two numbers for each equation, molality and our K terms. Okay, I'm going to figure out molality first. If you think about what molality is, it's one of our concentration units of measure. It's the moles of the solute divided by kilograms of the solvent. Hopefully you've memorized the definitions by now. It's important to know the definition because you, you got to use the definition to work the problem. We need two numbers. The moles of the solute, which is of course our glucose, and the kilograms of solvent. Now I look at this and I usually try to find the easier one first because this gives me some momentum in the problem. I note that our solvent's water. And we're told we have 455 grams of it. So that one's actually pretty easy to come by. The kilograms of solvent we just divide the grams by 1,000 to change the units to kilograms, because remember, we have to have kilograms units in this equation. We have 0.455 kilograms. All we need now is the moles of solid, and we're in business. So can we figure out that? Can we figure out how many moles of glucose we have? Well, I hope that we can, because we're told that we have 55.8 grams. Of course, the mass divided by the molecular weight of glucose. Now, if we add up all the parts, you know, 6 times carbon's uh, atomic mass, 12 times hydrogen's atomic mass, 6 times oxygen's atomic mass from the periodic table, 
we figure out that the molar mass of our sugar glucose is 180.155 grams per mole. So if we do the division to figure out number of moles, we quickly realize that we've got 0 0.3097 mole of our glucose. So we plug that number in right here, 0 0.3097 mole of our solid, and we divide it by 0.455 kilograms. This results in a molality of 0 0.6807 molal. Again, that's just a number I get off of my calculator, okay, after just doing the math. It looks like over here, We've got, what, three sig figs, so I could round that up to 6.681 molal to maintain the three. All right, so that's the molality. That was probably the hardest thing to come by um, in terms of setting up the work for this problem, because now I can plug that in from my lowercase m in my equation here and also over here. And boy, I'm getting closer and closer to being able to solve for my change in freezing and boiling points, okay? I'm going to erase this because it didn't give me enough space, right? But those are my molality terms. Now, the next thing I need to know is my K terms, Kf and Kb. Freezing point, depression constant, boiling point, elevation constant. They're solvent dependent. Every solvent has its own value. You don't have to memorize these numbers. They're usually found in a table. You can find a, find a table in chapter 12 of your book that will tell you the values for K and F and K, KF and KB for water as a solvent. It has, so, so happens that the value for water for KF is 1.86 and the value for KB is 0 0.512. Both of these numbers that I'm writing in here, I'm not paying too much attention to the units, but, but both KF and KB have similar units. It's basically degrees Celsius per molal, so that the units work out in the end, okay? Now, I already mentioned that the Van Hoff factor I for glucose on molecular compound is just equal to 1 for both cases. So it's basically we're multiplying this by 1. It's not really going to play much a role, but I wanted to include I in the equation um, just so you don't forget about it, okay? Because that I term is very important for the ionic compounds, okay? If you have multiple ions upon dissolution produced, I will not be equal to 1. And you need to account for that in the mathematics. So it's good to see it from the start when we're working through these sample problems. So if you do the math, delta TF is 1.266 degrees Celsius. And if you do the math for the other one, delta TB is equal to 0.3. 4.85 degrees Celsius. Now, again, paying attention to sig figs. This is actually an exact number, um, so we're going to assume it has you know, infinite sig figs. It's a counting number, basically. Um, but we got 3 and 3, so I should probably truncate to 3. So it looks like maybe I'd want to round up to 1.27 here. And over here, again, 3 for both of these, so I'll round up again to 3, 4, 9, gauge this 5. Okay. So those are my quantitative results. Now, these numbers I computed, it's important to understand what they represent. They represent the change in the freezing point and the change in the boiling point. Whenever you see the triangle, it means change, right? So change in the freezing point, change in the boiling point from the solvent's native natural condition, okay? So our solvent here is water, right? And of course, we know water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. In fact, it, it sets that center Celsius scale for us, or that centigrade scale, right? That, that's what it does. So when I compute the change in boiling point to be 0.349 degrees Celsius, what that means is that my boiling point is going to be elevated by this quantity. It's going to be, be, um, go up by that quantity or raised by that quantity. 
So if I'm going to predict my new boiling point for this solution, considering this boiling point elevation, I would say that my expected temperature of boiling is now 100.349, where this is just the change, the raise in boiling point, and how much it goes up. So that would be my answer for expected boiling point. Similarly, if I'm considering my expected change in freezing point being 1.27 degrees, well, we know that freezing points go down. They are depressed or lowered as a result of solution formation. We know that the water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So my expected freezing point is negative 1.27 degrees Celsius. Okay. So this was a nice example. It shows both calculations for freezing point and boiling point for a similar solution. And we can see that for equivalent concentrations, or molalities of our solid in these two solutions, the freezing point actually changes more than the boiling point. This is a characteristic of our solvent water by virtue of the larger magnitude or larger number K for the freezing point depression constant compared to the smaller value for KB. Okay? So the Ks, Kf and KB are not equal. Um, they depend upon the solvent and they're generally not going to ever be equal. Okay? So sample problem 77. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was useful.